All right, coming up next, it is a welterweight showdown between Colby Chaos Covington and Nate Diaz. Well, you hear the pop from the crowd, DC, as Nate Diaz gets set to make this walk here tonight. You never know when it's going to be the last time we see this guy compete, but there's a lot to like when we see Nate Diaz in the audience. Nate Diaz is a savage, a guy that just epitomizes fighter from the attitude, the walk, the music. Everything tells you that when Nate Diaz shows up, you're getting ready to watch a fight. A fantastic striker and a great jiu-jitsu practitioner. Yes. Nate Diaz is just a well-rounded fighter and one of the biggest stars in the UFC. We've seen the Stockton slap before. I'll set the total. It's just so disrespectful. Over under one and a half. So you think he throws it tonight? It's just so disrespectful, <laughs> but it's so Nate Diaz. All right, we'll see if he invokes the Stockton slap here tonight but Nate Diaz is back and hopefully in a big way for his supporters around the world all right so here's the former UFC interim welterweight champion Colby Covington and whether he's banging on the Brazilians or going at fans on Twitter there's a lot that encompasses this total package of Colby Covington he's a hell of a fighter though. but ultimately it's about the fighting and the fighting ability is what has carried Colby to such a great start in his UFC career. A former champion, a guy that's been in there with the very best of the division, and when he's been in there, he's been able to get his hand raised. I always go back to the Rafael Dos Santos fight, and I watch Kobe put a pace on him that Dos Santos, who is also known for his cardio, could not keep. It was inspiring to watch, and if you know Kobe before fighting, you know that he trains as hard as anybody in the world to try to accomplish his goal. Our tale of the tape for this welterweight fight. Diaz is three years his senior. He is one inch taller. He will have a four inch reach advantage. All right, now for the official introductions, we go inside the octagon where we find Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. When the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Herb Dean. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. <laughs> It's who does he first? Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record of 21 wins, 13 losses. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Stockton, California. Ladies and gentlemen, he is an Ultimate Fighter season winner, Nate Diaz. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 17 wins, three losses. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Colby Chaos Covington! You've been giving your instructions in the dressing room. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. We will have a clean fight. Touch gloves, let's make it official. Ready. Ready to fight. Dateline, Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the fight capital of the world with respect to anywhere else you want to go. If I'm a fighter, if I'm an athlete in combat sports, this is where I want to go. You want to fight in Vegas and now this beautiful T-Mobile Arena. 
is the backdrop for tonight's great UFC event. Oh, really making good use of his reach advantage as he lands the straight punch there. Man, how good is that jab from Nate Diaz? Almost as if he's been doing it for 20 years, right? I mean, he has been doing it. You know, he's got a great boxing coach in Richard Perez, a guy that he believes in, a guy that has allowed him to gain the confidence to stand with the best strikers in the world. And now he's got that tie clinch. Now he engages in a Muay Thai clinch. You better protect that head. Great job securing the Muay Thai clinch. Watch for big knees to the body, and eventually him switch it up with a big knee to the head. Nice punch, man. Ooh, blocks the shot. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this gentleman. Man, he's just got a great feel for the striking realm. Right? Beautiful. Oh, he finally gets the takedown now. So what do they say? Try, try again. If, if at first you don't succeed, you try, try again. And this guy is the poster boy for that saying. Because he shot many takedown attempts, and he finally has secured one. And he's going for the choke now. Watch triangle, watch triangle. arm to the side get his head against the mat now watch as he goes to the finish watch his chest go to the mat he goes flat and this might just be a matter of time wow all right right into side control here dc biggest difference between half guard and side control well side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. So I've got to be very, very aware. It's still advantageous, but it just seems a little more free-flowing than having something like a half guard. Oh, his opponent's squirming like a fish out of water now. The ground and pound is on point. This could very well be the beginning of the end. This could be the beginning of the end. We've seen some really good ground and pound fighters. This young man is as good as any we've ever seen. Covington's has got full mount now. Solid strike on the ground. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. He actually goes to an omoplata. Great pressure going forward. By the not tapping out tonight. All right, right into side control. Upper body strength figures to be put to good use here. Yes, absolutely. And you got to look for his opponent to turn back into him. He should chase guillotine. But the opponent turns to the opposite side. He can take his back, throw his hooks in, try to choke, or flatten them out and just go for the finish. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity patting. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Well, any time you are in a ground-fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. All right, he's got side control here, DC. You know, he's got a lot of different submissions in his arsenal once this fight gets to the ground. Well, not ideal to spend this much time on the bottom, but you can't fault him for his activity. Landing strikes here from the bottom. Nice work by DX. Man, this is some serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head like through the canvas. He's one of the better ground and pound fighters we have in the entire UFC, and you're seeing why. Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's gonna start looking to land big shots from the top. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent, you gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Pretty good work with the ground and pound here by Covington. All right, 
right, so the takedown's the big storyline in that previous round. Let's look back at some of the highlights, DC, and got to be pretty discouraging to get grounded that many times in one round. Oh, it's so discouraging because all you want to do is let your offense go, but every time you're getting dragged to the floor constantly, you're starting to get fatigued. He's starting to wear on you. Let's see what type of effect it takes on his offensive approach as the next round starts. Oh, nice land there with the punch. You see, he's taking advantage of what is an obvious edge and reach. Not there. Diaz's lower jaw now starting to show signs of swelling. Decent right hook attempt, but it's no good. Big powerful punch land. Now he gets back in range. Starting to do some really significant damage to the body here. Another strike lands there. Oh, there's the double leg takedown. Well, hard to win fights in mixed martial arts from the bottom, but nice work here in that position by Diaz. Well, this is some serious pressure from the top by Covington. The close guard. Looks like a potential submission attempt here. And this might just be a matter of time. here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They are intending to harm. Oh yeah, he's landing very accurately. He jumps on a headlock. We call this in wrestling just a headlock. And if you're not careful, you can get stuck in an arm triangle. My triangle, my triangle. There he is, he's moving to the finishing position. Now watch, he goes parallel right next to his opponent. When it's time to finish, he has to go. Oh, man, that was slick. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Lands the grounded pound strike here. Man, how fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter and he's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. Well, this is a tough fighter to buck off. Very good pressure and work here by Covington. Oh, useful strike on the ground that was. Under two minutes to go. The ground and pound has been there all night. Diaz's lower jaw is extremely swollen now. Covington's right back to the full mount. Useful strike there, the ground and pound on point tonight. All right, a good ground and pound by him here, certainly staying busy, and not just busy, but effective. You can just throw punches to keep the referee off you. This guy is throwing punches to be effective, to throw damaging strikes. He's doing a fantastic job. Now the guy's got on bar, he's attacking it on it. He's attacking on bar now. Continuing to try to manipulate the head here. Oh, now he's in trouble. Wow. All right, full guard here, DC. We'll see how soon he tries to pass. Well, he needs to be passing immediately. In the full guard is where you are in most danger as a top fighter because they have all of their submissions. Right. They have the guillotine. They have the armbar, they have the kimuras, they have all their locks when they're in the full guard. 
So if you pass, you really do limit the danger that you're in from the top position. Well, you see him land the jab there. He's got the reach advantage. You might as well use it. Ooh-wee! Ooh-wee, what a right hand by this young man. He is getting lit up right now, John. Oh, big left hook there! Yeah, he picks it all up. And what a round! All right, so there's the horn at the end of the round. Multiple takedowns landed for him over the previous five minutes. And you know what, John? Even more importantly, look at the opponent now. He's afraid to pull the trigger because he's been taken down so many times. Getting taken down is one thing, but getting it, having it happen to you continuously really does make you gun shy. And right now, he's very tentative to let his offense go because of the fear of getting taken down back to the mat again. All right, here we go with our next round. And DC, you've spoken a lot about ground and pound skills and how it's a little bit of a lost art in modern day mixed martial arts. Certainly not for this event. No, and he does it the old school way, right? Now, nowadays, you push a guy to the side of the I've got to use it as a barrier to get up. Right. Not with this guy. He stuffs your head in the corner, he gains his posture, and he just starts dropping hammers, dropping hammers until eventually you're going to turn to your knees. He'll take your neck and choke you, or he'll just put you back down. It's it's crazy to watch him dictate his opponent's actions with his power from this position. Not many guys can generate that type of right. power. You got to go back to guys like Mark Munoz. He used to call him the Filipino smashing machine yeah. because he was so good with his ground and pound, and this guy shows that same exact type of performance. Good series of strikes by him. Great job of mixing it up, being active, keeping busy, doing great work. Nice kick. And both guys really throwing with authority. Oh, slips and rips. He's got the body on a swivel tonight. Battling for hooks. Oh, shot to the body connects there. He hasn't really thrown too many body strikes in this fight, but now, as this fight goes on, he is not discriminating, working the body, and those shots are going to count. How good is that right hand? Big punch lands over the top. How's he going to follow this one? Covington's got the tie clinch. Let's see what he can do with it. Oh, and he counters with a straight left wow. outhanded flush. Actually got the takedown. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Now he's going to try to attack Kimura here. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. Submission defense there. All right, side control now, DC. When you get side control in the fight, what are you looking for? When I get to the side control in the fight, and I believe this young man... Covington's trying for a submission here. Oh, he's attacking Trope now. He might get a finish here. It's in there deep. There you go. Nice work from the bottom. Tags him with the punch. Oh, wow, that happened quickly as the fighter reverses position there on the ground. Unbelievable position change. Wow, what a transition. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. 164 total strikes have landed for Colby Covington. And still landing at a pretty good clip, DC. Landing with 58% accuracy against Nate Diaz. Oh, great head movement there. Slips his head off the center line. And defensively, that's exactly what you're looking for. It's almost like he telegraphs when the punch is coming. And when he sees it, he just makes a slight little movement. Right or left. To get out of the way and avoid those shots. Well, he continues to stay busy. What do they say, DC? Punches in bunches? Punches in bunches. He's landing them upside of the opponent's head over and over again. All right, again, he shoots for a takedown here and unable to get it. So the takedown defense reigns supreme yet again. The takedown defense is holding up. Johnny's doing a great job of keeping his feet going backwards, sprawling off the hips, and anticipating the shot coming. Very well done. Oh, he's really starting to 
apply pressure on his opponent here. Different approach here in the last couple rounds. And it's the exact sense of urgency that you want to see from a fighter take the judges out of it. Both fighters here continuing to try to get a more dominant position in the clinch, get fatigued in the process, I would think. It's very taxing to be chest to chest. Double leg takedown attempt here, and that is a good attempt as he gets the fight back to the mat. It's ideal. His ideal situation just happened. And now he has a headlock trying to pin his opponent's back down flat onto the mat. Look from the transition to an arm triangle to try to chase the finish. Watch triangle, watch triangle. arm to the side, get his head against the mat. Now watch as he goes to the finish, watch his chest go to the mat. He goes flat, and he's out. All right, so he postures up here and now figures to rain down some ground strikes. Yeah, the ground and pound would be a plenty from this position. Oh. And that'll do it, 15 minutes in the books. All right, so we now look back at some of the action from that previous round, DC. A lot of good highlights on both sides. I mean, a lot of good highlights from both competitors. They both should be very proud of what they accomplished. But I'm telling you, man, I'm not sure they can keep this up. If they land at this clip for another five minutes, somebody's going to sleep. Hey, hey, hey. Great round. Well, listen, we can do better. You know where your strength is. You ready to fight? You ready? Go ahead. job by him there to raise the guard and protect his head. He's doing a good job of keeping the guard high, blocking his head, making sure he's not taking those damaging strikes up top. Well, not only has he stayed aggressive as he was in the previous round, landing a high volume of strikes, but he's also been efficient, not just with his strikes, but also with his body movement. Complete performance out of this fighter here tonight. All right, side control now. We'll see if he can advance position. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Side control now. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Good movement by him here, transitioning very well on the ground tonight. Step for step, he's staying with his opponent in every transition. Pressure from the top by Covington. All right, he's got him in the north-south position now, D. Covington's going for a choke. Oh, he's got a choke. Oh, we're getting a finish here. Oh, he might have got him with a choke. in the fight. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on the ground. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs>
All right, he's in a half guard position here, DC, and in a good spot to dole out a lot of damage out there. A lot of damage can be done in the half guard. You sit back on that leg, you press out into your opponent, you drop elbows, you drop punches. What is very key is you controlling the underhook on the far side. If you give up that underhook, your opponent can use the half guard to build up to an elbow, sweep, or just chase down a single leg. Nice right punch followed by a left. Well, now if you're the opponent, you really got to be careful as Diaz is able to find a home for that right hand. Yet. When Diaz starts landing the right hand, you have got to stay firm. You have got to dig your heels to the ground and say, no way you're going to just run me over. Easier said than done when you're facing Nathan Diaz. And he landed the right hand there. Diaz gets absolutely melted by that head kick. Continues to mix it up, going for the head, mixing in some body shots. Remain in the round. Oh, single collar tie here. He blocks the punch. Big punch lands in the middle. 30 seconds now to go. Covington gets the double leg takedown. Nice job there disguising his entry. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now the ground and pound starts. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Side control. Well, pretty good work off of the bottom here by Diaz. All right, there's the end of the round, so it was a huge strike to the head that stunned his opponent and, and nearly got him out of there. Yeah, that was a big moment. A big strike lands, his opponent's on wobbly legs, that is exactly what, what you want to see as you're walking back to your stool. Your opponent staggering back to his corner and being hopeful that he can get it back together before the start of the next round. Fifth and final round. Diaz is punched to the body there, doesn't get there. Nice job by the defense to block the shot. Oh, and he connects there. His hands look good to him. So fast. I mean, this guy has tremendous hands. Oh, a nice job to catch the leg and work it right into a takedown. Thought he's going to attack a triangle choke here. Watch triangle, watch triangle. There he is, he's moving to the finisher position. Now watch, he goes parallel right next to his opponent. When it's time to finish, he has to... And he's out. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. All right, has the guard closed here. Well, any time you are in a ground-fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Keep it busy here off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Splits the guard, lands the right hand. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah. No pity pat to this guy. Ha. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strikes. Covington's got him in a crucifix. Gonna work from the top now. Ground and pound strike is true. Well, as usual, suffocating work from the top here by Covington. Three minutes now to go in this one. Now he sees the triangle. And this could be trouble here. Looks like it's pretty tight. He's trying to work his head out of harm's way. It, it might be over. He's to push the arm to the side. Get his head against the mat. Now watch as he goes to the finish. Watch And this might just be a matter of time.
Oh, and he chokes him to sleep with the arm triangle. Again, pick your poison on the ground with this guy. All that pressure on the side of your neck. I don't know the artery, John. I'm pretty sure you might. You get all that pressure on that artery, and it pushes you to sleep. What is it? I think it's the carotid artery, and a lot of fighters say they've got a pretty good feel for it. He certainly did that. That's why you got to have friends that are like encyclopedias. John Ennis, my encyclopedia. My guy. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He was able to get the fight to the ground exactly where he wanted it. Eventually, his opponent gave him an opportunity to get a submission. He did that, and he should be very proud of the work he did tonight in the octagon. So there he is, your winner by submission. That could hold up as one of the better subs of the year. Near perfect execution tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 29 seconds of round number five. Declaring the winner by submission, due to an arm triangle choke, Colby Chaos Covington. Well, the celebration is on in his corner, and hard to blame these guys, sort of waiting to exhale, get a huge win tonight, and not just the win, but they get it by submission. They knew what they had in front of them. They knew how tough a competitor his opponent was, but they also knew that if they could get this fight to the ground, they could find a submission. They found a submission. He got his hand raised in the way that he loves the most.